Yo, 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 Hi, I'm Ben Aupal and I'm back with season 2. This is the second episode of the Rare series. In this video, I'm going to resolve the paradox that I had posed in the previous episode. The paradox goes like this. You had a capacitor charged with charge capital Q connected to smooth railings. And in the presence of a uniform magnetic field, you had a movable rod. And the resistance overall of the circuit of the rod, of the railings and of the wires was all negligible. Once the capacitor starts discharging, there will be a current flowing in the clockwise direction and because of the IL cross B force, the rod will acquire a velocity to the right. It will experience a force of ILB to the right, which will cause an acceleration and ILB is equal to MA. On the other hand, if we write the circuit equation, there will be an induced EMF across the rod, which will be equal to VBL. And according to that, you will have charge as C times VBL and differentiating it, you will get the current as CBLA, where A is the derivative of velocity. And this was the contradiction. The acceleration obtained from equation 1 and ob obtained from equation 2 were different in magnitude as well as the direction given by this negative sign in the second equation. So this was the paradox and let's see how we will resolve it. So first off, equation 1 is correct. It's just a force equation and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The second equation is where the issue arises. The second equation is not exactly correct. Uh, let's have a look. Now suppose I slightly modify the circuit by introducing some resistance. So I have charge Q and minus Q on the capacitor and the capacitor will start to discharge. So there will be a current in the clockwise direction as the charge on the positive plate starts to decrease and you have a magnetic field and because of the ILB force, the rod will acquire a velocity to the right and ILB is equal to MA is correct as I, as I said in the previous slide. And therefore, the circuit equation for this situation will look like this, where EMF will be equal to VBL. So, at a general instant, let's say the charge is small q on the capacitor. And now, let me write the circuit equation. Let's travel in the clockwise direction. So, once I travel across the capacitor, I will have a potential increase of q by c. Then, I travel across the resistor, I'll have a drop of IR. And then I travel from the higher terminal to the lower terminal of this EMF. So I'll have minus VBL should be equal to zero. So this is a circuit equation in this case. In, in the paradox question that I had posed, the resistance was tending to zero. But here is the crucial point. Because the resistance is tending to zero, the capacitor is going to discharge in a very short interval of time. And therefore, you will have current tending to infinity. So what are the equations that I had written in the previous slide in the paradox question was all about what is happening in that short interval of time in which the capacitor is getting discharged. Now here's the important thing. The resistance is tending to zero, but current is tending to infinity. And what happens is the product IR is finite. It is not zero. And therefore, when you have a circuit of this sort where resistance is negligible, can you write VBL is equal to Q by C? No. The reason is, even though resistance is tending to zero, you have to realize that the term I into R can still be finite. And that is the resolution of the paradox. That is the catch. That is why VBL is equal to Q by C is not correct during the acceleration of the rod because you will be missing out on the term of IR even though you may not see a resistance in the circuit the current is infinitely large enough such that the product of I into R is still finite. So what is going to happen in that short interval of time is the, the potential across the capacitor is going to decrease as the charge decreases as it discharges and as the rod keeps on accelerating the velocity will increase and therefore the EMF across the rod will keep on increasing at the instant when they become equal to each other, when Q by C becomes equal to VBL, you'll have steady state because from the loop law, you can see that the term of IR will become zero. When Q by C is equal to VBL, IR is zero and that means current itself is zero and that means we have reached steady state. So all of this happens, like I said, in a very short interval of time. But in that short interval of, interval of time, you cannot write VBL is equal to Q by C. So now that we've resolved the paradox, 
let me just uh, talk a little bit about what is actually going to happen i think some of you in the comment section were got it spot on you were absolutely correct on what is uh, on writing the equations and uh, getting the final answer for the final charge in the steady state well let me still just uh, write those equations so that all of you can be clear on it so from this equation where i have ilb is equal to ma if i were to just integrate it i'll have integral i dt times lb is equal to m into integral a dt so i'll have integral i dt is nothing but the charge that flows in the circuit which will be q minus q where small q is the final charge on the on the positive plate times lb is equal to an integral a dt will be the change in velocity so initial velocity being zero you will have mv and this will be one equation and the second equation in steady state when finally we have steady state reached where current is zero only in that case we can write vbl is equal to q by c and from these two equations you can solve for the final charge as well as the velocity acquired so basically because the current is tending to infinity il cross b will tend to infinity but all of this is occurring for a very short interval of time so basically it's as if the force the magnetic force on the rod is going to be an impulsive force and what we've written here is the impulse of the force is equal to change in momentum basically we've written impulse momentum theorem for the magnetic force on the rod so this is a way to numerically solve the problem so always remember that if you have a circuit where you have a capacitor and resistance is negligible keep in mind that even though resistance is negligible or tending to zero the term ir still can be finite don't forget that so i'll leave you with one more question suppose i have an lc circuit where you have an inductor connected to a capacitor to no resistance here i have resistance is equal to zero so i can write the equation as l dy by dt is equal to q by c with a negative sign why are we not considering the term of ir is ir can ir be finite in this situation you must have solved lc oscillations with this equation and this equation is correct even though r is zero in the previous situation we could not neglect ir here why are we saying ir is zero and why can it not be a finite value it's not a difficult question if you think in terms of energy but do post your thoughts in the comment section i'll have a look that's it for today see you guys good night